Today we have the Gibson Custom Dave Mustaine Flying V Trans Amber. There's only 75 of these. It's made in the custom building, not the production line building. It has ebony fretboard, pearl inlays, a nice thin, basically D-shaped neck. Volute, Grover tuners. Beautiful gold hardware with covered Seymour Duncan Thrash Factor pickups. The Dave Mustaine Thrash Factor and then the 59. And then two volumes tone. This thing feels very comfortable and sounds exactly how I personally would want a guitar to sound. <laughs>
check out the bridge humbucker both of them together and then the neck humbucker and cleans leads and distortion <laughs>
I remember seeing this guitar earlier this year, Dave playing it on stage, and I was like, what is that? Because this thing had gold hardware and it had this awesome flame maple top. And I was like, if that model comes out, that's what I want. And I was concerned it was going to be a custom shop, and it was. And even more concerning that it was going to be a limited model. So there's 75 of this color, and there's 75 of the black one. And... They're both really cool. It's odd, though, that they're the same price. This one has a nice, I think it's about an eighth, it's either a quarter inch or an eighth inch, like, maple top. It's all maple on the top, on this mahogany body with mahogany neck and ebony fretboard. Basically, it, you know, it's, a, it's that classic Gibson Custom spec, and... You get all that cool binding. These witch have volume knobs grow on me a little bit. I'm glad that there's some sort of friction so I can grasp the damn thing. But I'm so used to the knurled metal knobs. I don't own the production run of the Mustaine Gibson anymore. It's kind of obvious why. But I've noticed that this neck is way more comfortable than the other one. It, it was still pretty comfortable on the production run. But this one is like the ideal... like. Dave Mustaine feeling neck like it's basically a D shape it's kind of flat but rounded off on the sides a little bit it's it's nice and thin it's not thick great binding this one you get fret nibs on which I don't know why the production run doesn't but you get fret nibs on the custom shop one and a weird trade-off is since it's a custom it, it has just a straight 12 inch radius on the fretboard 
and doesn't do the 12 to 16 compound radius that the production run does. So if you like the compound radius, you would like the production run more if you are looking for one of these Vs. But I'm, I'm used to playing a Les Paul Custom, so like this, this radius is familiar to me. In a way, this guitar is easy to play, as it should be for what you're paying for. It's premium guitar. It should feel comfortable. It doesn't neck dive on me. It's it's nice and light, it feels like. I, I think it's just under 8 pounds. So it's a, it's a fairly light guitar. I like the, the nitro feel. It smells amazing, too. No complaints on these pickups. They're basically the ideal sound that I really enjoy, especially for a passive pickup. I love Alnick 05 magnets, and luckily the Thrash Factor is basically a Dave Mustaine spec JB humbucker, and the 59 is probably my favorite neck pickup. It sounds so good. I love the attack on it. It has great sustain too. I love the sustain on the 59. And there's no exception to the Thrash Factor pickup as well. Like it has. It has excellent sustain too. Basically, this whole guitar just sings. I don't think I've noticed really any tuning stability issues. It stays in tune. This one doesn't really have a QC problem besides one weird thing. And it's going to happen to all Gibsons eventually. But mine, it looks like it's already happening. Is It's getting this weird checking line where the binding and fretboard meet the neck. And it's just a fine little line that's just running right through... And it, it's basically a, a, a finish crack, but it's just, it's, it's going all the way down parallel. And you can see it in the right lights. You can kind of feel it. And that's just part of apparently owning a Gibson. I'm glad I'm happy with it because it wasn't cheap. But it's, it's basically like one of my number ones. If that even makes sense, it's one of my mains for sure. Like I, I play this weekly. It's, I, I don't know if I could call it my number one because I love the Jackson, but this thing holds up well. I think it's very comfortable. It sounds great. I, I'm, I'm having fun with my Deans still. I love my Jackson. I, th I just think of it as just like another run of Mustaine guitars, but of like the, the premium stuff. And it sounds and plays the way I would want a premium guitar to play. And it's the ideal spec that I like. I like this neck. I like the two volumes and a tone. I like the Seymour Duncan pickups. I like the 24 frets, the ebony fretboard with pearl inlays. This is the kind of spec I like on a guitar. And, oh yeah, the six in line. This is great. So they call they call the regular run the EXP, and that's because it's the Explorer headstock. It doesn't mean anything else besides Explorer. I don't know if they still call this the EXP, but I don't. It's just a custom run of Dave Mustaine's V's. And oh, this top! I'm very happy to have a nice flame top on a V. It's beautiful. It's basically aging well with me. I'm, I'm liking it more and more. It's not like I enjoyed it and then I'm, just, I'm falling out of love with it. Like I'm really enjoying this instrument. So the more I own it, the more I play it, the more I hear it. I'm like This is very fun and comfortable. And it sounds excellent. <laughs> Personally... I really connect this guitar with this year. Dave's Gibsons were coming out. I, I saw Megadeth this year twice. 
and Dave was playing this guitar. This really kick-ass new album came out, and I just associate this guitar with this year, this album. It's, it's just this whole experience for me as an individual. So from a personal level, this guitar isn't just a guitar to me. It's, it's a whole experience and a staple to the positives of this year for me. If someone's going to ask that question, is it worth the money? That's a personal question. I mean, for me, I spent the money. To me, I... It was worth it for me, but I, I'm a huge fan, and I, I like this spec. I'm genuinely having fun with this guitar. You have to be a huge fan, and this guitar has to speak to you. Otherwise, it's probably not worth it, but for me, it, it was worth it. I, I, don't, I don't have buyer's remorse. I don't feel like I wasted money on this. In a way, yeah. I'm also grateful I got a hold of one. It and I didn't have to pay aftermarket. Like I got it from a retail store and I'm happy that I was able to have that happen. I'm glad at least when I'm playing this stuff, it's, it's fun. It's a great tool of destruction. <laughs> I like what Dave's doing with Gibson. I like this guitar. I'm happy. Dave's happy. And I, I have fun playing some Gibson guitars. They're fun. <laughs>